the terms one-tailed versus two-tailed tests often get thrown around and they may not seem all that interesting and sometimes they get glossed over but they do represent valid ideas that, we, that, are, that are relevant to understand. These represent where the test that is being performed is powered to detect differences. Now, let's unpack this. So let's say you have your favorite normal distribution, doesn't matter what it is. And perhaps the test that we're performing is to see if some number that we get, x, let's say x is here. The test is to perform whether or not x is significantly different than the mean. That's a simple t-test, no problem, you can take a look. And if you're trying to power this with 5% uh, confidence, uh, then what you would have in a two-tailed test is your ability to detect that significance distributed literally in the two tails of your data, of your distribution. So you would have power here and you would have power here. 2.5% of your power goes here, assuming you're talking about a 5% confidence interval, right? And 2.5% of your power goes here. And so if X falls in this area or this area, then we can say that X statistically significantly is different than the mean of this, of this distribution. That's what, that's what a two-tailed test is capable of doing. Now, a one-tailed test does the opposite, or not opposite, but slightly different. A two-tailed test will give us the ability to detect whether or not this x is different than the mean if we're performing the same test, but only on one side. So if say like we do a 5% test for x and we have the same x, let's say that same x is sitting exactly where it was before, but now we're doing a one-tailed test. And let's just say for the per sake of argument that this is 5%, I know it's not really, but let's say that this was 5%. Suddenly, we could, re we could statistically conclude that this X is different than the mean because it falls within our power range. Note, we could say here now that X isn't different, that X is greater than the mean. We cannot say in this one-tailed test anything about whether or not x is lower. Even if x is way the heck over here, like way out over here. If x were to show up way out here, a one-tailed test where we're only looking at the, that the, at the area above, at the tail above, is completely, has nothing to say about an x even way out here. So this is one-tailed. greater, and this is two-tailed. That's pretty much all that's going on here. Now, you might be tempted to say, well, why don't I always just use a one-tailed test? Because if I, with the same power, with 5% power, I can reject, I can be more sensitive to, I can reject a whole bunch of more values this way than if I did a two-tailed test where I have to check both ends. Well, you're right. That may be the case. You can definitely do that, but you can only do that if you have complete confidence. If you're a hundred percent certain that the value that you're getting, that you're testing for being different than the mean will always be greater than the mean. If it ever is lower and you have any reason to believe that it may be lower then a one tailed test will not catch that because you're going to miss the other end. A one tailed test could also be less than it would only be on this side and not that side. Uh, and that's also valid to do as a one tailed test. Where people run into real trouble is where they do the two-tailed test, find that they are very close to significance, but not quite. And then they just say, well, let me try the one-tailed test. Let me see if that gives me significance. And lo and behold, it gives them significance. And then they go about uh, claiming that their result is statistically significant because they changed their test from a two-tailed test to a one-tailed test. 
So that's called p-hacking. And it is a huge violation of statistics. Do not do this. That is, there are many reasons why this is statistically invalid and your claim is no longer valid. And your, and your conclusion is, is inaccurate. You cannot change your test after looking at your data because you were not close enough to significance. Even though that may seem very tempting of a thing to do. You have to start out always by planning what type of test you're going to do, what you are expecting to be powered to see, and why, if you're doing a one-tailed test, you know for certain that the variable of interest that you're testing must always be greater than the mean in order for you to reject uh, your statement and have, uh, and have significance. When in doubt, you should always do a two-tailed test because it is safer and it is the more accepted way to go about conducting uh, the statistical analysis.